In lecture 4, we looked at graphical synthesis of mechanisms. In this lecture, we will study analytical synthesis of mechanisms. As we discussed before, there are different classes of dimensional synthesis problems. Function generation, path generation, and motion generation. In function generation, the motion of the follower link as a function of the input link is of interest. In other words, we are interested in maintaining a function theta 4 equal to f theta 2, where theta 4 is the angle of the follower link and theta 2 is the angle of the input link. In path generation, we are given a sequence of points x1, y1, x2, y2, up to xn, yn, and we want a point on the coupler to traverse through these points. In some cases, the timing information may also be prescribed. In other words, your input will be of the form x1, y1, t1, x2, y2, t2, etc. Where t1 is the time at which you need to reach the point x1, y1. t2 is the time at which you need to reach the point x2, y2. In motion generation, we are given a sequence of poses x1, y1, theta1, dot dot xn, yn, theta n. Our goal is to design a mechanism such that a point on the coupler passes through these positions and the coupler makes the angles theta1, theta2, theta n with respect to the global x axis. Apart from these three basic classes of problems, we have also seen that there may be constraints on the location of the pivots as you had seen in your assignments. And there can also be packaging constraints, which limits the allowed lengths of the links of the mechanism. In practice, the design requirements vary with the application at hand. And so there are many possible problem statements for dimensional synthesis. Consequently, there are also a variety of solution approaches possible. To focus on the main aspects of the design process, here we will study some canonical problems as we had done for graphical synthesis. For function generation, we will focus on designing a crank rocker mechanism for a given rocker output motion. And for motion generation, we will focus on designing a four bar mechanism for two or three precision positions of the coupler. The word precision is used to denote that the coupler needs to pass through these three poses exactly. The solution methods that we will be using will build on the intuition that we developed from the graphical approach. But as I will indicate, the analytical approach is much more general. Before proceeding to the analytical synthesis problems, let us first go over the basic mathematical background that we will be needing for understanding the analytical synthesis procedures. In particular, we will look at the following. How to write the equation of a line in vector form? How to obtain the position vector of midpoint of a line segment? And how to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a line segment given that we know the positions of the endpoints of the line segment? To do all of this, we will need to know how to write the dot product of two vectors, especially when they are given in complex number exponential form as we have been using throughout this course. Let u and v be two vectors. So this is our global reference frame. This is the vector u. This is the vector v. The magnitude of the vector u is given by small u here and the magnitude of the vector v is given by the small v. The angle that the vector u makes with the x-axis is theta. Angle that the vector v makes is phi. So we know that the vector u can be written as u e to the power of j theta or u cos theta plus j u sine theta which is the same as u x plus j u y where u x is u cos theta and u y is u sine theta. Similarly, the vector v can be written as v e to the power of j phi, 
which by Euler expansion is same as v cos phi plus j v sin phi, which is the same as v x plus j v y, where v x is v cos phi and v y is v sin phi. Since u and v are complex numbers, they have a complex conjugate. Their complex conjugate are written as u star and v star, which is u e to the power of minus j theta and v e to the power of minus j phi. Using Euler's expansion, we get u star or u conjugate as u cos theta minus j u sin theta. What we have used to do this expansion is cos of minus theta equal to cos theta and sine of minus theta equals to minus sine theta, which becomes ux minus jui. And you may have learned the definition of complex conjugate in this form. Similarly, v conjugate is v to the power of minus j phi, which becomes v cos phi minus j v sin phi, which is vx minus j v y. Now the dot product is defined as u dot v equal to half of u v conjugate plus u conjugate v. Remember, this dot on the left hand side is the dot product of the two vectors and the multiplication on the right hand side is complex number multiplication. If we use u as ux plus jui and v as vx plus jvy, then this product here becomes ux plus jui times vx minus jvy plus ux minus jui times vx plus jvy. If you go through the product and do simplification, you will obtain ux vx plus uy vy. Now, if you recall that the dot product of two vectors u and v with components ux ui and vx vy is what is shown here. So you should see that this definition of dot product when I have vectors in the complex form makes sense and the result coincides with what you know about the dot product of two vectors. In polar form, the dot product can be written as uv cos theta minus phi. To see this, you have to just substitute ux equal to u cos theta, vx equal to v cos phi, ui equal to u sin theta, vy equal to v sin phi. Then ux vx plus ui vy becomes u cos theta times v cos phi plus u sin theta times v sin phi which is same as uv cos theta cos phi plus sin theta sin phi. Cos theta cos phi plus sin theta sin phi. This is cos of theta minus phi. So you get the formula here. We will now see how to write down the parametric equation of a line. So given the position vector of a point, so in this picture, B is the point whose position vector is given and a direction vector shown by the red arrow here, which we call V. What is the equation of the line passing through B along the direction V? So let us take any point on the line, say G, and let us look at the position vector OG. So OG equals to OB plus BG. So this is the same as OB plus K times V, where K is some constant. So if I choose one value of K, I get a different point on this line G. If I choose K equal to zero, I get the point B. So OB plus K times V is the equation of the line passing through the point B along the direction V. When k is positive, I will get a point to the left of b. When k is negative, I will get a point 
to the right of p. Now instead of a direction, if I am given the position vector of two points b1 and b2, then what is the equation of the line through them? As we saw before, OG was equal to OB plus K times some direction vector V. Now here I can choose the point B to be B1. So I will have OB1 and the direction vector can be B1, B2. Then my V would become OB2 minus OB1. So my equation of the line becomes as shown here. One thing I want you to note here is that these definitions are independent of the dimension of the space in which we are operating. So I'm showing planar pictures here, but these equations are valid even when you are in three dimensions or even higher dimensions greater than three. Any general n dimension, these equations are valid. Also, these equations are not dependent on how you represent the vector, whether it is a bunch of coordinates or complex exponential form or anything else. Note here that when k equals to 0, you get the point b1. When k equals to 1, you will get the point b2. When k equal to 1, you have ob1 plus ob2 minus ob1 and so you get the point B2. When K is between 0 and 1, you get a point within the segment B1, B2. And when K is greater than 1, you get a point to the left of B2. When K is less than 0, you get a point to the right of B1. So to get the midpoint of B1, B2, we can choose K equal to half. The position vector OM will be OB1 plus half times OB2 minus OB1, which if you simplify will be half OB1 plus OB2. So OB1 minus half of OB1 will be half of OB1 and this half of OB2 will come in here. So the midpoint M of the line segment B1, B2 is given by OB1 plus OB2 by 2. Now let us look at the equation of the perpendicular bisector shown by this dotted line. We will look at two ways to write this equation. First note that the vector OG where G is any point on this perpendicular bisector is the vector OM plus K times a vector along MG. So I can write OG equals to OM plus K times V, where V is a vector along MG. Now, if we multiply the vector B1, B2 by J, we rotate it anticlockwise by 90 degree. So J, B1, B2 will be along this direction which is along the line passing through M and G. So substituting V equal to J B1 B2, I can write OG is equal to OM plus K times J times B1 B2. B1 B2 is same as OB2 minus OB1. So I can write this formula here for OG. Now OM, we have seen in the previous slide, is OB1 plus OB2 by 2. So we got the equation shown here. So this is one way of writing down the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a line segment B1, B2. Another way of writing down the equation of the perpendicular bisector is to note that since mg is perpendicular to b1 b2 the dot product of mg and b1 b2 will be zero now mg equals to og minus om and om we have already seen is ob1 plus ob2 by 2 
So we have mg equal to OG minus OB1 plus OB2 by 2. B1, B2 equals to OB2 minus OB1. So substituting B1, B2 and mg in here, we get the following formula. If we carry out the dot product and simplify, we get OG dot OB2 minus OB1 equals to half of OB2 dot OB2 minus OB1 dot OB1. I will leave this simplification as an exercise. You have to just carry out the dot product and take the term OB1 plus OB2 by 2 dotted with OB2 minus OB1 to the right hand side and this is the term that you will get. The first term here is simply OG dot OB2 minus OB1. In the next module, we will use this preliminary facts to study the methods for analytical synthesis of mechanisms.